Hi, I'm Debbie Leslie. I am the kindergarten team leader for the fourth edition of Everyday Mathematics, and I am just going to go through some of the main content changes that we made for the fourth edition of Everyday Math. So the first thing that anyone might notice if they're familiar with previous editions is that we expanded the lessons from what was before the top and bottom two-page spread, which teachers really liked it fit on their lap, but the other feedback that we heard as we, or when we went out into classrooms was that they needed a little bit more meat. And so we kept the trim size of the kindergarten teacher lesson guide, but we did double the number of pages. So essentially every lesson, except for the open response and re-engagement lessons, which I'll mention later, are now spread across four pages, two top and bottom spreads. And that has allowed us to do a lot of things that we hope will make it easier for teachers to teach the lessons with the richness and the depth that we see in them. So there's more explicit questioning, there's more detail around how to set up the activity. Every lesson has kind of a connection to math they've done before and a summary or a conclusion to kind of wrap it up. And the other thing you'll see over kind of on that third page is we've beefed up what we call the revisit activity. And in kindergarten everyday math, the revisit activity is really a key piece of our distributed practice strand where kids revisit previous content in more advanced ways. And one of the things that we learned in working with teachers on the old edition is because that was squeezed into just a few lines, it was very tempting to skip it. Teachers may not have even seen it. And obviously having that distributed practice in everyday math is important. So this expansion to four pages allowed us to really beef that up, make it more noticeable, help teachers see how they could take an activity they did before and make it more complex or add a level of recording or do something to help kids um, revisit that. Um, the other thing it's helped us do is make sure that we have a readiness, an extra practice, and an enrichment option for every single lesson in the program. And that's always on that fourth page. Um, so essentially, we feel like we were just able to take what was there in a very concise format and draw it out and help teachers really see the meat and teach it more fully and feel like there really is 45 minutes to an hour of good math every day for their kindergarten kids. So that's a big foundational thing. Um, so now I'm going to go into some of the strands and where we've done some changes from previous editions and why in some cases. Uh, so the first thing people might notice, particularly because it comes at the very beginning of the, of the teacher lesson guide, is we made much more explicit the attention to foundational counting principles that the Common Core calls for. This is mostly in um, KCC 4. So one-to-one -one correspondence, the cardinal principle, and I think the one that's least known and understood is the successor function. And what we've done is really kind of talked about what those things are, taken each of them in turn explicitly, and developed activities to help kids who really are still learning these in their kindergarten year um, develop them and have a really strong foundation. And we have front-loaded this work in sections one through three so that then kids can apply their really strong foundational understanding of counting to all the stuff that comes later in the year. And you can see from these examples, these are just a couple of exam or three examples. We've done it through games and we've done it through the usual kindergarten kind of kinesthetic, tactile, um, engaging interactive activities. That's just an example of them. Uh, related to counting, but still a little bit different, is number sense. And so these kind of fall in the K, the operations and algebraic thinking strands like KOA3 and KOA1. We've done a lot more than we did in previous editions with composition and decomposition of numbers, using flexible representations of numbers. We've used quick looks, which are quick flashes of dot patterns on 10 frames or in other representations. Um, and of course, we still use manipulative in games. This particular slide, you can kind of see right here is more concrete representations. Um, and gradually, we're moving towards more abstract representations of numbers. And on the far, far side of the slide is actually taking a familiar game, roll and record, where you roll two die and you record whether if you got a two and a one, it's in the three column. If you got a three and a two, it's in the five column. We used to just have kids uh, record the number. And now, towards the end of the year, we have them actually recording the equation. And so you would maybe recognize that in, in KOA1, which says that we have kids representing addition through pictures. You can see that on the slide. Numbers, 
um, manipulatives. You can see that with the connecting cubes in different colors and ultimately equations. And so this is something that it's not like counting where it's really front loaded in the beginning of the program. It's across the entire teacher's lesson guide, but it does move from more concrete to more abstract as the year goes on. Um, within this is kind of a special case of that, uh, but complements of 10, so number pairs that add to 10, which is KOA 4, is really a new standard for kindergarten that used to be more in the range of first grade standards. And so we thought about a lot about the progression of this. And these three activity cards, which correspond to games in the fourth edition, um, kind of show the progression. These are just a subset of the things, but 10 bears on a bus is a very concrete complements of 10 game where kids actually put three yellow bears on a bus and then they have to figure out how many more red bears to fill the bus. Very concrete uses 10 frames. Hiding bears is a little bit more concrete, I mean a little bit more abstract. It comes kind of in the middle of the year and kids put a certain number of bears in a cave under a cup and based on how many are showing they figure out how many more to 10. And some kids will still use 10 frames to help them figure that out and some kids will not because they'll start to have memorized that. And then in section eight, which is the second to last section, is car race, which is a much more abstract game, but still working on complements of 10. Kids have to split a roll across, split a dice roll across multiple cars moving on a track and try to get to a full 10. And so it's a cooperative game, but it just represents the progression of this particular skill across the year. Uh, another thing people might you notice is that we've changed our attention to place value. In older versions of everyday math, we really did focus on written numerals up to and beyond 100. Here we've really shifted the emphasis. We give considerably more attention to place value for T numbers. And even at that, it's 10 ones and some more ones in correspondence with the common core um, KNBT1. Um, We've given relatively less attention to written numerals and place value above 20, but I wouldn't say that we've removed it entirely because the Common Core still has kids counting to 100. And so we do use some of those written supports like a number grid to support that oral counting, but it really is more kind of backgrounded. And in the foreground, when we're talking about written numbers, it really is zero to 20. And you can see one of the reasons I put this slide here is you might notice a new format for the My First Math book where we have a sample problem on the page and we've tried to put more examples for kids to do. That was in response to feedback on the previous edition. And you can see here too that when we do talk about teen numbers, we use double 10 frames, we use equations, we use counters. So we're trying to bring all of the representations of numbers that kids have been working with for numbers below 10 to those teen numbers to 11 through 20. Another place that we've enriched the, the content is in the geometry strand. And this is a place where we feel like the Common Core has given us some nudges to do even more of what we tried to do before, which is we tried to have shapes in different proportions and different orientations. And um, we've always tried to resist the notion that all triangles are equilateral triangles sitting on their base. But the Common Core has really pushed us to think about doing that even more and even better. And so this kind of on the far side there is just a subset of shape cards that we use in a lot of activities. And we use this to promote a lot of spatial language. Kids are describing not just named shapes that we know, triangles, rectangles, but a lot of other shapes to develop their shape language. And then this one is another of the new My First Math book pages. And you can see kids have four opportunities to draw shapes that they see in a picture that the teacher shows them. A picture might be of a playground or a neighborhood or a school classroom or something like that. So these are just some examples. So another place that we changed um, is measurement. And this is an actually a place where the Common Core encouraged us to, to back off a little bit and do more of the foundational work in kindergarten. And so you'll see more emphasis on descriptions of measurement in all dimensions and direct comparisons. Which of these is longer, shorter? Which holds more? Which weighs more? And then we delay and put relatively less emphasis on the unit iteration that we did more of before. And that's really as a foundation and transition to first grade where that's a bigger um, focus. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is that we have completely eliminated any full lessons related to money or clock time because in the Common Core those are not in kindergarten. So if you see anything about that at all, it might be in an enrichment, again, just a preview of first grade. 
And the other thing that we've got is um, just a range of different uh, changes to the components that I just wanted to move through here. Um, we've taken our periodic assessments, our beginning of year, mid-year, and end of year, and modified the format in a way that we think is easier to use. So essentially the task description itself is on the recording sheet. Um, we have added, as have all the other grades, a two-day open response and engagement lesson in every section. That begins in section two and goes all the way through section nine. And that's some really rich problem solving in ways that are appropriate and accessible for kindergartners. We've added more activity cards. I already mentioned that we have differentiation options of all three types in every single lesson. And the connections activities are things like literacy connections, art connections, social study connections, and there's at least one of those cross-curricular activities in every single kindergarten lesson. Um, because of its popularity in our pre-K program, we added a Sing Every Day CD for kindergarten, and so those have songs that we suggest how you might use embedded in the lessons themselves. Um, and then the last component feature I wanted to mention is we've enhanced the My First Math book. I alluded to that a little bit earlier. Um, partly we've added more examples, we've added more pages, uh, but another thing we did is change the format, and I'm going to show you on the next slide. It's a double-fronted book, so essentially you might look at it this way or this way. And so on the green front, you'll find the activity-specific pages. Those are linked to particular lesson activities. The one you're looking at is um, an early version of Roll and Record. And then the yellow-fronted page, you flip it, and I think kids will enjoy this, is the section with the blank journaling pages. And those are for teachers to use as they see fit, or we've written in a lot of suggestions, particularly in the early part of the year, of how they might use them in conjunction with the activities. The last thing I wanted to mention, this is harder to do um, this way than face-to-face, -face, is there's an article that we've put the link to there. It's a commentary from Ed Week. And I'm sharing it because I feel like it really sums up the philosophy of kindergarten everyday mathematics. It's called The Case for the New Kindergarten, Challenging and Playful. And I'm just going to close by reading you a quote from this article. It says, engaging and challenging academic instruction should and can be developmentally appropriate and it does not have to be overwhelming, stressful, or boring. It does not have to supplant play or child-initiated activities, and it certainly does not have to involve worksheets, one-size-fits-all lessons, or an overemphasis on assessment. So we saw that and felt like it really encapsulated this philosophy that we can have rigorous, challenging, playful, appropriate mathematics for young kids, and that that's the way to go. And that's what you'll find in, in the fourth edition of Kindergarten Everyday Math.